I would say this to any man. If your woman wouldn't wait for you if you went to jail for five years, why are you with her? Why? If she wouldn't wait. I know she's hot. I know she's funny. I know she makes you laugh. But if you can't sit in that jail cell with 100% certainty that she's not out with her friends, them in her ear, talking shit, watching Sex in the City, whatever it is, and her ending up with some other guy, why are you even buying her dinner? For what? Sex? Like that loyalty to me is the only thing left that's valuable. When I had me and Tristan were in jail, we were sitting there saying, we have it so much better than most guys. Because most guys in jail, imagine you're a normal person, you go to jail. Who's feeding your family? Who's paying the rent? Who's feeding your kids? I said, Tristan, we're in jail and we're suffering, but everybody we love is good. I'm a man, I'm supposed to suffer. I'll sit here with the cockroaches. If that means all my kids eat, Everyone I care about eats, my mother's fed, my mother has a house roof over her head. Everybody has everything they want. Only person suffering is me. I'll take that all day. Most men who go to jail can't say that. Another thing that gave me absolute peace of mind is the women who love me are waiting for me. Imagine you go to jail and you're completely heads over heels in love with a woman, but you know deep in your heart that she's out in the club and she's, she's stealable. You talk about, we talk about thoughts you can't get out of your head in jail. It's amazing how when you lose all access to electronics, how thoughts are amplified. Most of us sitting here, you've never been without a phone or without a laptop or without a computer for, for 93 days. You'd be amazed how loud you can think. You'd be amazed how vivid your mind is. I learned that. If you had the nagging thought in your head, I loved her, she cheated on me before, maybe she cheated again, she hasn't written me in three days, and then plus jail. That's why they're all crying. That's why all the men in there were sobbing. Their wives are either fucking someone else or the bills ain't paid. It's not just his situation, it's everything else. Yeah. So now if you're going to say to me, what do I respect in a woman? I respect a woman who's going to wait for me. I have no interest in a woman. Oh, she's funny, she's cool, she's hot. Don't care. Don't care. Is she going to wait for me? And I also know, because of my experience, which ones would and which ones wouldn't. I'm not stupid. Because they'll all say they would. They'll all say they'll wait because they're on the jet. But I know which ones are lying. Because enough women have lied to me. I've seen it. So you do need that experience, but once you have the experience, you start looking for completely other things. Quick story to almost validate your point about experience. Uh, I like the direction Pat was going with this about if you want relationships or sex with a woman. Um, quick anecdote, your friend Myron, Fresh and Fit, yeah. we just did a big live event yep. three days ago. It was myself, Myron, Fresh, we're sitting on a panel, yep. 20 women. Yep. And he goes, watch this, master class, Andrew, master class. He asked all the women on the panel, um, average 25 year old woman, you tell me the amount of sexual partners she's had. What, yeah. the body count. And these women give a wide range of, oh, the three, 10, yeah. 15, 20, one girl said 100, yeah. numbers were crazy. Yeah. Goes down the list, asks all you, okay, great. Ladies, show of hands, how many of you want a man with more sexual experience than yourself? Every single girl put their hand up yep. and they said, yeah, I want a man with more experience yep. than myself. Yep. And the reason this came about was because Ben Shapiro reacted to a video yep. of me questioning Myron. Yep. All right, when should a man get married? And he basically gave a checklist. You need to make a uh, hundred grand a year. Yep. You need to have slept with 50 women. You yep. need to have six to 12 months of savings, a checklist, checklist, yep. checklist, checklist. And Ben Shapiro was like, that's disgusting. This is yep. a guy that married the first person that he had sex with. Yep. And it was incredible to see every woman validate everything that Mayim was saying and everything that you were saying about yeah. experience. Oh, women respect experience. In fact, I saw on a TV show, and this was like 10 years ago, and I have no idea what the show was, but it was a show about, it was on Channel 4 in the UK, and it was a show about sex, and da-da-da. 85% of virgin women would rather sleep with a man who'd already had sex than a virgin man. Wow. A virgin woman doesn't even want a man with the same level of experience. You're, you're respected for your level of sexual experience. And women are naturally demonized for their level of sexual experience. And even the ones in the West who pretend that's not true, the ones who are fully psyoped, wait till they see a girl they don't like. What's the first thing they call her? She's a hoe. Whore, slut. First insult out their mouth is she's promiscuous. So they know deep in their heart promiscuity you see is bad because they call each other promiscuous when they want to insult each other. Yeah. So yeah, you absolutely need that experience to make sure you don't get wrecked and psyoped. But now, and just in my current dating life, and it's good that this is on this podcast. So, you know, the girls can still email me. It's nice to read, but sorry. I don't trust any of you. I don't trust any of you. you. I don't trust anybody new. I have no new friends, no new girlfriends. Absolutely no, I'm not interested in any of it because what the things I value now are not the things I value when I was younger. 
my life was very, very different, but I'm glad I had that experience now so I can see who, who is lying and who isn't. I can tell. I can just instantly tell if they would lie or not. So let me, let me, let me kind of get to the point of what I was trying to say. I'm, I'm kind of uh, uh, more on your side. I don't have a Ben Shapiro story. But I think what happens is, is there's also risk for men to fear uh, because that could happen to me, so therefore I will never risk getting into a relationship yep. because of X, Y, Z. So Chelsea Handler, yep. he brings her up, right? Our initial reaction was, look at her, you know, she's doing this, she's doing that. So let me look up what her life was like. And Mario Aguilar says, hey Pat, did you know her life? I said, I have no idea what her life was. So she's nine years old, her brother at 22, who was her hero, her first love, her first, you know, like yep. her second father, loves him. He's going mountain climbing, he says, Chelsea can't wait to come back and see you. Great, goes mountain climbing, falls, dies. She's nine. Yeah. She comes back, she says, the most painful time of my life, right? So then when she needs her father to be there for her, he's gone, yeah. he's devastated. They had six kids, I believe. Mom and dad were still together. Yeah. So they're married and they were doing okay, car salesman making money. And then she says, till today, I may be successful, and she puts the act yeah. in the book, I'm still in a lot of pain. She was being interviewed by uh, Howard Stern. Yeah. Got emotional talking about this. Okay, so we can sit there and laugh about it, but for men, similar thing happens as well. When I was a girl broke my heart, dude, I will never, ever give this risk to that. I think there's also, as influencers, we have to also make sure that men know, look, just look at the stuff that you did wrong. Completely. Look at the stuff on how you repositioned yourself in the wrong Completely. way, right off the bat being too much of a this, this, that. Now, just when you go in, like the way you said, I love when he said, what are you doing watching this show? We don't watch this in this house. Yeah. We watch this. Now impose and have the, earn the respect to be able to impose your beliefs in a way where you can coach and lead. You nailed it. Because what did I say earlier about this podcast? How many times am I going to watch it back? 15 but, times. Yeah, because people, I live in experience and I analyze the experience and I draw every lesson from that experience. If you're a man who has a heart broken, a lot of them are so stupid that they may revert to the mindset that you've said. They may say, oh, I don't want to have my heart broken again, but they haven't sat there and said, why did this happen? You have to know the why to prevent it from happening. You mm -hmm. have to analyze the scenario and learn from it. One thing I'll say about women that's fantastic. One of the best things women are, are one of the things women are best at is they're a fantastic mirror. Women are a reflection. If you have any weakness inside of you, or if you have any downfalls as a person, a woman's going to show you who they are. If you're too emotional, if you're too easy to get angry, she'll teach you that. She'll teach you that you can get angry too fast. Piss her off. If your dick's small, she'll tell you. <laughs> she'll, she'll tell you exactly what is wrong with you when she is mad. She'll sit there and say, you got a short leg and your haircut shit. <laughs> get a new haircut. I hate your ugly ass. They'll tell you exactly what is wrong with you. When you look at your bad or your previous relationships with women that went wrong, you can sit there and go, okay, this all went wrong. What has she taught me? She taught me that I'm emotionally affectable. She taught me that if she ignores me, she gets more attention than if she's nice to me. She taught me, you have to sit there and analyze all the lessons and you have to implement them. It's the same with absolutely everything. But women are a fantastic mirror. A lot of these guys who resort to that are men who don't have the self-reflection to sit and say, okay, why did this happen? As a man, you have to be accountable for absolutely everything. Every single thing that happens is your fault. I didn't go to jail because of Romania. I went to, when I was in jail, it was my fault. I, even though I don't believe it was just, even though I do not believe it was fair, even though I know I am innocent, it is my fault. Because I didn't have to become so influential. I did it. But it's also, it's also my fault when I'm on the jet and, and living my perfect life. I did that. I did the good, I did the bad. You made her leave you. You did. Whether you like it or not, you are the reason she became so cold. You are the reason she doesn't listen anymore. You are the reason she's so arrogant all 100%. of a sudden. You are. You may not have identified why yet, yep. but if you identify why, then you get into your next relationship healed and understanding what you did wrong and learn from it. That's what you have to do. But most of these yeah, men don't that. want the self-accountability. I love that. And they want to blame the women. Yep. You have to blame yourself. I know exactly now how to keep a woman happy. So I ain't got nothing to worry about. I've learned my lessons. I know exactly how to keep a woman happy. I know when to set a boundary, when to be nice. I know exactly what to do because I've self-analyzed. A lot of these red pill guys, they want to do exactly like you said, just run around and just bang chicks because they've never looked in the mirror and go, why do these chicks not want to just love me? <laughs> why am I a fuck up? You're not perfect. God is perfect. Nobody is perfect. You need to analyze yourself. If you fix those problems, I'll give you an example. Even when I first start getting rich, 
I was, I never worried about gold diggers because I can't be gold dug, but I was always a bit like weird about if a woman wants something expensive that I was always a bit like, not because I'm tight, but just like, oh, we haven't been together that long. Why does she want such an expensive bag? Da, da, da. And over time I learned they don't want the expensive bag because it's an expensive bag. It's because my life is now so expensive and so grand. When I'm doing hyper expensive things, if I buy a $5 million car, I look like a dummy if I won't buy a $500 bag. I look, I look frugal and frugality is a form of fear and it looks fearful. I could say no to a $500 bag when I had no money to the exact same girl. But when you have a certain amount of money, it's not that they're gold digging you. It's just that to you, it's nothing. And there's a degree of gesture to it. And I also learned over time that, you know, the best way to get no, new beautiful women is for them to see your ex and how well she was treated. They love that shit. <laughs> they love it. <laughs> when they see all your ex, when, cause women will do that. Women stalk me. When I had Instagram, they'd stalk me. And they'd see my, the lifestyle my girl lived. And as soon as I was single, they were like, hey, woo, they want to turn. So I was like, you know, I actually get a larger ROI. Just be Mr. Nice. Cool. It's also helped me in my current situation. I've never been mean to anybody. Please call him. No, he was nice to me. Bye. There's a lot you learn, but you have to self-reflect and learn and, and pay attention to the mirror. These men who are afraid of commitment are not blaming themselves like they should. Because I actually truly believe, and this is never going to be, make the misogynistic supercut of the BBC. I actually truly believe that women in their hearts, unless they're completely corrupted by society, women just want to love and be loved and feel safe. That's what they want. They want a man that they can look at and they truly know he makes the decisions and I trust him to make the decisions. And I love him for that. And I respect him for that. That's what they truly want. When a woman starts turning on you, it's usually because she doesn't trust you for some reason. She doesn't trust your judgment. And that's not always cheating. It can be other things. Doesn't trust your judgment as a whole, right? If she starts to doubt your judgment, how can she truly love you? You're the protector, you're the provider. So if a woman's gone cold on you, you have to sit there and go, okay, she doesn't trust my Great judgment. Feedback. She doesn't trust my judgment. Yep. What have I done that yep. made her doubt me? Did I get my sixth booster injection like a dummy? No wonder she doesn't want dick. Because I keep injecting myself with poison because I'm an idiot. It's not her fault. It's your fault. Every single time a woman leaves you as a man, it is your fault. Always. Even if a richer, more successful, more alpha man stole her from you, it's still your fault because you need to be like him. It's always 100% your fault. These men don't take accountability. It's 100% their fault. I got one last topic, unless if you got a follow up. No, keep going. Okay, so last topic here. Phenomenal way to finish that up because I think sometimes the messaging from that community is, you know, it's just everybody's this versus no, you got to take some accountability. Sorry before you go on, yeah. but that's, that's a fantastic point because people say to me, can you turn a hoe into a housewife? And I say, listen, I wouldn't want to, but I bet I fucking could. There ain't a woman in alive who's going to cheat on me. With who? With who? With who? <laughs> who is she going to cheat on me with? Look at the guy in Starbucks, Mr. KFC, no. She's with the top G, she's got all the clout. She's with the boss. She's in the five star of the Italian Alps. She's on the Gulf Stream. She's in the Bugatti. Everyone's jealous of her. Who the fuck is she gonna cheat with? Nobody. There's not a girl alive I couldn't get loyalty from. Now, would I ever wanna do it? Probably not. I like the idea of exclusivity. But once you get to a certain level, yeah. If you're that guy, you're that guy. Let me ask you a question. There's somebody that's single right now. You think you can turn her into being exclusive to you? Her name is Kim Kardashian. <laughs> how about, how about you mean she's, she's watching? You I know, wouldn't but... do that to you easy. I wouldn't do it to you. <laughs> I wouldn't do it to you. Okay. I'm not, uh, I'm, 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 he's sorry. married now. No, but, but you know what? This is actually another But by point. the way, I love what you just said right now. But I wouldn't. I love what you just said right now. We, we were having a conversation the other day uh, about the, the relationship with men, how it's supposed to be the boy, the, the men yeah. relationship. Just a fact, like I had a, a friend of mine, her ex, yeah. dropped it gorgeous. Yeah. Like when I tell you dropped it, I mean dropped it gorgeous. And everybody loved her. Yeah. And I, I could look at her and say, you're dying. Yeah. Her and her boyfriend broke up, three years they were together. I get out, all she wants to do is talk to me. We're hanging out, hey, how about yeah. this, how about that? I said, listen, there's no way you and I could ever be together. Yeah. No way, yeah. because you dated the guy that was my best friend. Yep. I like you a lot. You're beautiful. You're going to find somebody. It's just not going to be you. 100%. And she went a different direction. But that, that right there is the values that must be taught. 100%. Because I think the same way we have to teach the values of what it is to be running mates, men. Yep. Hey, man, if you're in my circle, that's the expectation. Yep. But it's the same way that you have to also you know, lead your woman to say, if this is going to be a relationship, here's the standard as well. 100%. And, and, and you know what, maybe I'm getting a little bit sentimental in my old age. Here we but, go. But I am. Let's say I meet a girl, right? 
and she's 23, 24, and she's been with a guy for six or seven years, and he loves her with all his heart, and she, she's talking to me. Part of me feels bad. I'm like, this is just like shooting fish in a barrel. This isn't even fair. This guy's going to be heartbroken, man. He's going to be devastated when he realizes she's with me. He's going he's gonna, to, it's going to hurt him, because he's going to know there is no chance at all. No matter what he types in that text, it's done. And I actually feel bad. And I'll say to chicks, you know what? If you break up with him properly, leave it a while. I'm getting to that point now where I'm like, not while you're still, you're still kind of talking to him, no. I feel bad. It's too easy. I feel bad. So when I say I wouldn't do it to Kanye, I actually mean that. Pussy is not worth me. Her, I don't even know him. But just like he loved her a lot, I'd feel bad. I just couldn't do it. I just wouldn't do it. I can't showing explain. a soft side, Tate. I, 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 I just wouldn't would do it. But it's also an interesting point yeah. you say about friends. That's super yeah. interesting. I could leave any of my girls with my friends for 20 years in a jail cell, and they would never touch her. I know it. I know it. And I do believe that birds of a feather flock together. And when I've had a lot of guys email me as well, and they say, hey, man, uh, my friend slept with my girlfriend. Uh, you know, I don't know what to do about it. And I will say, that's because you're a bitch. You're a bitch. And I'll tell you why you're a bitch, because you're rolling with bitches, which means you must be one. Because I'll tell you what, none of my friends, nobody on my team would ever, ever do that to me, ever. If my, me and my girl split up, she is gone, she is done. They would never touch her in a million years because that's the quality of man I roll with because that's the quality of man I am. You become a better man, you'll get better friends and this shit won't happen to you. If your own friends are snaking you for pussy, you're probably the kind of guy who snakes your own friends for pussy. So I blame you. It's your fault. You know, I saw a clip the other day. You know who Shannon Sharp